update, and this will probably be for the weekend as well. I don't think we're going to make giant moves, but I could be wrong. Uh, let's go over and take a look at where we are, where we came from, and what can we expect. All right, right now, um, Bitcoin is in its deciding mode, deciding whether it's going to get expansion of energy, um, which could lead to a bigger drop down to possibly the, the mid to low 20,000 range, or if it's going to go all the way back up to here, to that 49,500 area and so forth. Um, its first target area would be right here um, in the 42,000 area, 42,500. And I'm going to show you how that correlates with other you know, pairs and so forth. But um, if it doesn't, and uh, this area, this blue block that you see right here, here, let me change the color on that so it doesn't confuse you. Let's make it yellow for caution. All right. Now you see this triangular area right here. This is resistance. All right. So let's put a let's put a red line. All right here. This is resistance for no. All right there. Let's make it red. There we go. All right. So we're looking at this as resistance. And why is this resistance? Well, here we have back end here. Here's the front end up here. Here's another back end right here. So this whole area, if we look at it, where it has this like little mini head and shoulders, it's really more like a diamond pattern. But let's see. You see this area right here, how it broke through there? Now it's coming back up to test, and this is the resistance area. You can see the back, the front. So everywhere within here makes perfect sense for being resistance. Um, now let's discuss what could possibly happen. Now you have a triangular breakout right here. Down, up, down, up, down, up. A little bit of a pullback, and then broke through. Uh, that's a good sign. That's that's positive, but look at the volume. Notice the the anemic. Uh, that's a key word here. Anemic, <laughs> and that means lacking basically. Let's put it that way. And uh, the anemic volume that we're getting uh, is there's no real interest. People are you know, uh, so that is not really a good sign. Now uh, an good sign is the fact that I have seen big orders even with the smaller volume I've seen big order buying um, so there's hodlers out there institutions in my opinion um, and they're doing it on the down low uh, they're not rushing out or anything uh, but they are holding and that that's good because that buoys uh, Bitcoin and, and stops it from having participated precipitous falls you know and so forth but we're still in this triangular point of time where statistically we're more likely to go down than up right from May all the way going out until July uh, the 21st of July uh, so we're still within this phase so resistance is more likely to hold than anything but to contradict that, we also have this pattern that goes all the way back up to here. Will it do it the first time? Um, looking at the volume, looking at all the circumstances and all, I, I think you can get some meandering and even a retest of the lows or lower. Uh, so I like this yellow box and I would even make it kind of red. Uh, but I could be wrong and the reason I could be wrong is because if they turn up the volume, pump up the volume, if they pump up the volume on this, they could break these levels. And if they break this area of resistance right here, uh, you will get follow on buying. So if they're able to take out the 42 and the 4,000, the low 4,000 area, 
uh, you can get a real push. And that could send it all the way back up to my target where I want to start selling. I won't sell any of it, any of what I bought, until it gets above this 49000 It's It's done deal. I am in pure hodl mode. I don't sell anything. Uh, I, I'm not, you know, I have some more money on the sideline if we break these lows. But other than that, for my crisp, crisp uh, crypto, excuse me, damn sinuses, uh, my crypto allocation, uh, I am fully invested. And I can do a few things. I've got plenty of money on the sidelines if we can continue to go down uh, into the rest for the next two months, right? I got about two months to go. Um, so I'm prepared if we are able to break these lows. So that would be the next idea, you know, if that happens. But there's no guarantee that would happen, right? So then we'll turn this to blue or green, whatever you want it to be. I generally like blue. Um, so if that occurs, fantastic. I will be a buyer in this range down here. Um, but I'm not going to predict whether that's going to happen or not. Right now, we get the positive breakout of the triangle. The minimum target you would look for is for it to break this right here uh, and go up to that 42K and then ultimately up to the 49. So that's what we're kind of looking at right now. It is showing some strength, but the volume, psh, uh, the only thing that I like is some of the buy orders have been bigger, but that's just institutions moving into the space. And it might be smaller people catching up, nothing of real interest, I guess you can say. Now, you know, that's Bitcoin. So again, holding for this 49,000 area, looking to buy under the current lows. As we go forward, uh, we might just meander and, you know, uh, we'll see. All right, now let's get it. Ethereum. Ethereum is trading near, and this shows positive, positive momentum. This is trading near resistance. See this red line right here? If I wanted to sell any of my Ethereum, I would do it above the 2900 level from what I bought down here and here. Um, but not really sure. Kind of want to hold it until uh, see what it does. If it goes, exaggerates upwards and see if Bitcoin goes to the 49K, then I'll look to sell. I'll try to do it in unison with each other uh, because I think that this could get extra push and go all the way up to the uh, 3,300, 3,400 area, or maybe even higher, maybe up to here, up to 35 and so forth. Uh, that's kind of like what I, I feel. I think um, uh, a lot of a lot more buyers are available for Ethereum uh, than for um, for Bitcoin right now. Bitcoin kind of has a negative vibe to it, where Ethereum has a more positive vibe, just to point that out and whatnot. But, um, all right, so that's what I'm looking for here. But if you wanted it as a short-term trade, and we're buyers in my, you know, where I was stating before, uh, from the 1800 to 20, uh, 2000 area, um, you know, uh, a good sell would be at that red line. So uh, above that, you know, 2900. Um, so that's for a short term trade if you wanted that. So just saying something to think about. Um, now let's go to our friend Litecoin. Litecoin is really blah, it's a little less interesting than Ethereum. But it has more upside room all the way back to the 230 range and so forth on uh, uh, on Litecoin. So uh, it's nowhere near where I would want to sell it. Uh, so plenty of room to the 230s. Uh, this was a good buy from under uh, 160 all the way down to where it went down to 120. Fantastic, and again, just holding it. Would not want to be a seller until it gets above the two, the mid 230 range of any of it. And then comes my favorite, outside of Bitcoin, 
This is one that I put a lot of more money into, and it's simply because of the fact I could see the upside on here, and I like the story, as you know. And in the future, I would look for two dollars and above, and on and on. Uh, but ever since it went to the eighty cent range, mid eighties, all the way down to under seventy cents, you know, I, I bought a bunch of uh, the on the drop. And what would be my minimum? There it is, right there. Uh, 127 uh, so as a trade you know percentage wise this is pretty pretty nice but I probably would again like with Bitcoin want to hold it and wait to see Bitcoin hit that 49 uh, mid 49,000 mark before I become a seller on any of these XRP Litecoin or Ethereum because they might go over this area here and uh, in its followership of Bitcoin. It's just something that it would possibly do. All right, so now you get a picture of what I'm thinking and how I'm approaching it. Um, I'd rather the market personally, but again, you know, I want you to make a, a note here that our thoughts don't have anything to do with the market and how we trade. I would like the market to go over and do this and that, but I don't trade based off of what I would like or what I think or what I heard. I hear way too many of you making these speculative arguments that are designed in your mind, because your minds aren't wired correctly yet, for trading, um, to actually take action based on a thought or an idea or something you heard. It's not how you trade. You create a plan that's logical. Uh, whether you agree with it or not, is it make it's regardless. I pay my attention to the market and what it does and it's likely to do, and I keep my own personal opinions and ideas out of the place. Um, I'd love to see Bitcoin drop and go all the way down under the lows. That would be preferable because I know what I'm targeting to the upside. So I want an opportunity to invest even more. So it dropping down to here would be ideal for me. But that's my own opinion of what I want. Will that be what the market does? And, and am I going to, you know, I've got my plan. I'm going to be buying more down here. Um, that's all I need. Now, that's what I want. But if it, what if it doesn't do that? Markets are not all or nothing. They're going to do this. Uh, you know, uh, I've got the perfect crystal ball. I know what's going to happen. That's not the way it works. So you got to try to prepare both ways and make smart trades, if that makes sense to you. Now, it could break through here. It could go straight up to uh, that 49K. And all hell could break loose. Uh, but, um, you know, I, I am preparing for what I see based on the chart, not what I want. And uh, then you let the market do what it does. But you prepare yourself mentally and uh, you, you take it with an even keel. Um, and you react to what happens, not what you want to happen. I hear all kinds of things, oh, this is going to do this or that. You're predicting, predicting unless, especially if you don't have any uh, good logic or something of which to go on other than something you hear in a chat room or somewhere else. That's not a good way to, to trade, and it's very dangerous. But anyway, so that's where we are. We're still in the downtrend. Uh, it did break out of this triangular formation right here, so that's positive. But it hasn't passed its resistance in the low 40,000 area. Uh, until it does that, this is like meh at best. Um, so we will see. Uh, we'll see what happens. Other than that, I hope you guys have a great week. I, I don't know if I'll be doing a video. You know, If something happens, I will. But it, I kind of think it's going to get kind of boring here. Um, or maybe it won't. Maybe it'll, this right here, this zigzag pattern that here could drop all the way back down to here. I could see that one, two, three, four, five. Catches resistance, drops. We could short term drop all the way back down to under 35K. Makes sense. Um, but that's not a really big range. Uh, a few thousand dollars, big deal. Uh, what we really want to see is if it gets under the lows or if it breaks above these numbers up here. 
um, that's what we're really interested in. And if it starts to catch volume, because right here, this is a, this is boring and very lackluster to say the least. So there you go. I'll update you when I update you. I don't know if it'll be this weekend, but we'll see. Maybe if something happens. Uh, usually weekend volume doesn't really mean much. It reverses come the start of the new week. Uh, and that's the way it is. Other than that, have a, a great weekend, and I'll talk to you soon.